Okay, Stella Jones, SJ on Toronto Stock Exchange. We are ready to get back into this one. In fact, we put it into our model portfolios just recently. Um, it's looking good again. This is a, a really good company, by the way. It just kind of had a couple of soft years, and we uh, we took it out as a consequence. Uh, we were looking for an entry. We think we finally got one. Um, now, this isn't going to uh, overexcite you. This isn't a super exciting company, but you need some block and tackle companies, and this is definitely one of them. So what do they do? Well, you can see our graphic up there. It's pressure treated wood. And um, they have their two main products are utility poles and railroad ties. And this is a virtually endless business. I mean, I don't know how many miles of track we would have uh, throughout the world and in North America, but it's, you know, millions. And these things always need repair. You always need to put in new railroad ties, let alone if you're building new railroads altogether, and same with utilities. Okay, so that's big, big market. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a niche, it's a niche market, but uh, it's a big market for a company of this size. Um, and then residential uh, lumber, which you can see is building decks and things like that, and then industrial, and that's kind of a, a smaller business, only five percent of their business. Uh, the growth rate in each of those markets, so utility poles, this was as of uh, Q4 last year, uh, 2018 in other words, and it was 7.3% uh, growth in utility poles, only 2.7% in uh, um, the railroad ties, 18% in residential lumber, and only 1.1% uh, 1 in uh, industrial, but that one was small anyways. Um, okay, so why now? Well, first of all, as I said, it's a good company. So you always want to own a good company, um, and then you try and get it when it's actually getting just a little bit better and a little bit better. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's jump into the software. And you can see that's a pretty good track record of uh, return on invested capital. A little bit soft in uh, 07, 08, and then rebounded back to about 15%. It's been kind of just trickling down. The stock was still growing, though because uh, they were growing their business, putting more capital to work, just growing the business. So returns were, you know, a slight lag and I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, but then, you know, around 2016, you know, they weren't putting in much more capital and returns were kind of just sliding down. So if your, cap your capital's not growing, your business isn't growing, at least, you know, you gotta maintain the returns that you were already generating. And it wasn't, it was just, no, it wasn't a complete disaster either. It was only, going from 12% down to 11. But nonetheless, it was it was enough. So why now? And you might be able to see it on this graphic. It's pretty difficult, but returns are just starting to turn around. Okay, so uh, it's rounded off to 11% in both cases, but one is actually 10.82 uh, and the other one's 11.46. So that's you know, almost 0.6% uh, a move. And we can get a little bit more granular on it and do a quarterly view. So let's do the quarterly view. And it's gonna be hard to see on your video screen, uh, but I think you might be able to make it out there. And you, you can kind of see it bottomed out maybe two quarters ago. And then, so we've had three quarters or, sorry, let's try that again, four quarters ago. And now we've had three quarters of just Slight improvement, slight improvement, and that's when you want to buy these really good companies. And by the way, they've also put more capital to work too. So putting the more capital to work and getting uh, a little bit higher return. Again, I told you this is not going to blow you away. So let's, but let's look at the um, financials themselves. And we see the operating revenue was growing, you know, six quarters ago, 21%, 14, 10, and then pretty flat in the last two. However, those margins are actually better. So the September 2019 quarter produced an EBITDA of uh, 96 million, whereas September a year ago was only 78 million in EBITDA, uh, despite pretty much flat revenue. So improving their business, that's perfect. It's all you can really ask for, as I said, is the block and tackle name. This is not uh, you know, a game changer in terms of the world. You know, we're not uh, we're not building Apple phones. We're not doing 5G. We're not doing lasers. You know, we're not exploring space. But it's a good, solid black and tackle company. 
Uh, there is a small dividend of 1.38%. I do like this dividend chart. Um, so let's, let's focus on the bottom one. The bottom one is um, every bar is four quarters of cash flow and the blue is the dividend. So you can see the cash flow has just been improving the last uh, three, four quarters and the dividend is just slowly but surely rising. They're only paying out 19% of their cash flow. And it's a pretty simple case, but look, I'll take simple and high quality any day. That's exactly what you're getting with Stella Jones. So I, I really think this is the right time to step in to this high quality name.